Welcome to the hottest movie review on the internet today, the A-List Review. I'm your host, the Game Changer, Wes Troop, and it's time to go back to the theater, and it's time to go back under the sea, because it's the latest Disney live-action remake. Oh boy, my review of the 2023 fantasy musical film, The Little Mermaid, coming up now. Ariel, a young mermaid princess, is fascinated with the human world above. Even though her father, King Triton, forbids her and all merfolk to go near the surface. One day there's a storm at sea and Ariel saves Eric, the prince of a nearby Caribbean kingdom. She makes a deal with Ursula, the sea witch, and in this version, her estranged aunt, who was banished by Triton 15 years prior. Ursula creates a spell to turn Ariel into a human for three days, but she won't be able to speak or sing and must share true love's kiss with Eric, or she'll turn back into a mermaid and belong to Ursula. Ariel turns into a human and, with the help of some of her sea friends, hopes to get the prince to fall in love with her before time is up. So what did I think of The Little Mermaid? I thought it's a serviceable and sometimes charming musical fantasy film. It's based on the 1989 animated Disney film, which itself is based on the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. This version is directed by Rob Marshall, best known for directing films such as Chicago, Memoirs of a Geisha, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, Into the Woods, and Mary Poppins Returns. At this point, one of the main things I look for with these live-action remakes is does it do anything worthwhile with the material to make it more than a soulless cash grab? I can say it does do a few worthwhile things at least, and I didn't fall asleep or want to throw my television out the window, which is a bonus. While the first half hour of the film is basically a carbon copy of the original classic, there are a few new ideas thrown in afterwards. Most notably, the extra hour we're given helps Ariel and Eric's character development, and it gives us more time for chemistry to develop. Eric also gets some more to do, a different backstory, and a mother that's a nag. He also collects things from the undersea world, which makes him bond with Ariel, considering what we know about her favorite pastime, and also have their parents not wanting them to go to discover the other worlds, which they have in common. Other than that, though, the new additions aren't much of note, and they could have done more. There's also a lot of obligatory recreation of the iconic moments, sometimes feeling forced, like, okay, here comes the part where we have to do Kiss the Girl. If you're a big fan of the original, you'll even know what dialogue is coming next. Another element that's very mixed are the visuals. There's a lot of scenes that are dark and dreary that didn't do much at all for me, but the bright and colorful scenes do pop on the screen. The finale looked too dark as well, and certain characters were hard to see. At first, I thought the look of Sebastian and Flounder, with their more realistic design, looked a bit wonky, but I did warm up to them after a while. Holly Bailey is very beautiful and has a wonderful voice, doing a great job with the iconic character, and her version of Part of Your World is a wonderful highlight. I also enjoyed Melissa McCarthy's version of Ursula, seeing her chew up the scenery in fine fashion. These are some of Disney's most famous songs, and this version of Under the Sea is fine, but feels underperformed. Trying to make it more realistic, the fish and creatures just swim and sing. It wouldn't have been crazy to have them playing instruments when Sebastian is literally singing about them doing it. A hot crustacean band they are not. There's also a few new songs thrown in, such as Eric's Ballad, and a new song Ariel is singing on the inside while on land and can't speak. The Scuttlebutt song, or rap, or whatever music this is classified as, is awful and migraine-inducing and a rare L for Lin-Manuel Miranda. There's also No Chef Louie, which is a disappointment. The cast do well with the material, starring Halle Bailey as Ariel, the curious and headstrong mermaid fascinated with the human world. 
Jonah Howard King as Eric, the free-spirited and adventurous prince that Ariel falls for after rescuing. Melissa McCarthy as Ursula, the evil sea witch Ariel makes a deal with who also has secret agendas. Javier Bardem as King Triton, Ariel's strict father who hates humans. David Diggs as Sebastian, the loyal crab and King Triton's advisor who watches over Ariel. Jacob Tremblay as Flounder, Ariel's best fish friend, and Aquafina as Scuttle, the dim-witted seabird that's Ariel's friend. Well, with almost all the remakes, I'd pick the original over the remake any day. The Little Mermaid can be fun and heartfelt, and it's certainly a watchable pick for the whole family. Number-wise, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, which gives it the A-list rating of Do It. It's a small do-it, but a do-it nonetheless. All right, well, that's the show. I'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Westside of 515. Like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash West Troop A-List. And of course, you can follow me on the Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at Wes A-List. Until next time, troop out.